There we go. As always, good morning and welcome. I'm so happy to see you all here. We're all so happy to be joined together this morning. Lovely preview of what you're going to get to see the rest of in just a little bit from Dancing in the Streets, Arizona, and I'm, I'm looking very much forward to seeing it in just a little bit, too. But anyway, good morning. So happy you're here. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Mount La Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation on this beautiful, almost summer, Sunday morning. My name is Jombor Zoltan and I am this morning's pastoral associate, which means I share the pulpit with our minister, Reverend Matthew Frank Crary. However, he's not present today uh, because we were, have invited a very special guest and a special program, which you have just seen a little preview, uh, and we'll find out more about it shortly. <clears throat> we all know that some of our members, due to their own personal and normal reasons, participate in our service via Zoom. We welcome them also. Let us turn around and wave to the camera so that we can bridge the electronic divide and feel our unity and community together this morning. Welcome to new and repeating visitors who are were welcomed by our greeters at our open door. And if you're a repeat visitor, we are delighted that you are with us again today. Since we video our services and make them available on YouTube a few days later, I like the practice that Debbie Roberts, our former practice associate leader, started a while back, that we welcome first time online viewers of MVUU who happened to chance on this particular service and those who are experiencing today's service by having viewed multiple online MVUU services beforehand and as yet haven't physically come to our sanctuary. And we also welcome those of us who see us in the past from the future, as for example, those members and snowbirds and rainbirds who can't zoom in with us today because of time zone delays or perhaps other Sunday activities and commitments. We are all welcome, always and all times. 
Now, it takes a cooperative team to make our service happen. We are pleased to have Chris Tackett, of MB our MBUU music director and choir master and worship music piano accompanist. Our song leader, Joel Yellen, and our audiovisual team, Todd McNeely and Alex Stuckey. Our camera operator this morning is Lee McNeely, and our Zoom host, Robin Busso. Stacy Sosa and Gracie Allen manage our children's religious exploration activities. Our welcoming greeter team today, Michelle and Ray Dini, are our first interface to us and to newcomers and visitors. And Joel Yellow, Yelland also contributes by preparing coffee and providing comestibles for our after service fellowship. And kudos to the volunteers who stay late and clean up the patio and the kitchen after fellowship hour. Thank you all. I'm a very fortunate fellow. Lately, my timing for having selected particular Sundays to be a pastoral associate has been really rewarding. We usually don't know ahead of time what the theme or topic will be for that particular Sunday for which we have signed up. In my case, I lucked out. The near Valentine's Day rose ritual, the flower communion back in March, and today, we will be focusing on one of our wonderful Unitarian Universalist hymns, Let It Be a Dance We Do, written by a unique and gifted individual, Rick Maston. Rick was a Unitarian minister and a songwriter and a singer and a guitar player, a troubadour. This song has special significance to me, and you'll hear a lot more about both the song and about Rick in today's service. What is so special about this beautiful hymn to me? It was the song Pi and I chose to be the theme of our wedding ceremony back on September 28th, 2013 at the Gross Point Unitarian Church in Michigan. Pi and I both were members of the choir of that church. That's where we met, and yes, Chris, Pi and I do periodically talk about joining this choir and Wednesday here nights. at MVUU, <laughs> and it may yet come to pass. So let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you in the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Pi loved the melody and especially the lyrics, such a realistic reflection of life, such well-spoken philosophical depth are expressed in the lyrics of this song's entirety. Pi and I both came from previous marriages. We were already senior citizens when I asked for Pi's hand and she accepted. I think getting married at an older age is a moderately different union than one when you're both young and go forth to build a new life together from scratch, especially if uh, you're then, if you then manage your relationship through the fullness of time. But as being older and perhaps wiser, and both of us having had lifelong experiences by then, marriage may be somewhat different. It's much more about reality, and not so much about dreams and unknowable expectations. Let it be a dance catches that essence of life, the vicissitudes of existence and experience. This holy song was and remains our personal relational anthem. As we were putting together the service, as we were putting together the service this morning, Matthew and I were talking about what could we possibly do that would go with Joey and Celeste and their wonderful dancers that you'll get to see here in just a little moment. And that's when we heart hit upon the idea of, well, let's have a good deep dive. You'll hear a little bit later about how the song came to be. And later in the service, I've got another story for you. So today's service is all about dance. And dance is merely one of the wonderful ways we can engage with music. So we've got a couple of fun things coming up. We are now going to light the chalice, and so are Addie, another uh, pastoral associate, will assist me. 
This morning's chalice lighting words are titled Life's Sacred Dance by Reverend Jonah G Joanne Giano. She's an emerita UU minister. Reverend Giano was inspired by Wendell Berry, a poet, novelist, environmentalist, activist, and Sarah Morris Campbell, another UU minister, author, and activist. We light this chalice in honor of life's sacred dance of living and dying. May its flame remind us of those who have passed to us fragments of holiness. May it remind us that we too are participants in the dance, in this dance. And now we'll invite Joel up and I'll invite you to rise as you see fit. And we'll sing, like I said, since we're talking so much about it the entire service, we've decided to chunk it up in three different pieces. Let's sing the first verse of Let It Be a Dance. Good morning. For everything, there is a season. Good times and bad times. Planting and reaping. Joys and sorrows. We recognize this each week through our ritual of joys and sorrows. This water that Shambor will be pouring, collected from Sonoran skies, our homes and our journeys represents our congregation. We drop stones into the water as we share joys and sorrows, reflections of these seasons of our lives. We invite our congregation to respond with celebration and comfort. A joy this week from Alan Walker. He writes, I have a couple of joys from the Walker family. We are welcoming two four-legged friends into the family. Charlie belongs to Skip and Mary, and Mayo belongs to Alan. A sorrow concerning Hobie Denny. Hobie is recovering from a cycling accident earlier this week. He's in the VA after having had surgery on Tuesday to repair a broken hip. He's in good spirits, and he hopes to be back with us as soon as his healing allows. We also add a handful of stones for the sorrows unnamed, but still present among us. and another handful of stones for the joys. As a reminder of the seasons, 
held among us, but not spoken aloud. Our pastoral care committee invites you to contact us. We want to hear your joy or sorrow. With your permission, we'll share it on Sundays during our ritual. May we feel the rhythm of these seasons and respond to the need among us. May it be so. Thank you, Cheryl. I'd like to tell you the story of Let It Be a Dance. This is from a collection, uh, a, ref a collection of reflections of uh, Reverend Rick Maston and the writings of Reverend Stephen D. Eddington, along with Reverend Kirk Lodeman Copeland, Reverend Kimberly Debus, and with some help from Chat JTP. It was one of those horrendous tragedies echoed in the memories of a small community casting a long shadow over the holiday season. Carmel California High School, typically abuzz with youthful energy, fell silent in mourning. One December evening decades ago, tragedy struck with unforgiving force, leaving devastation in its wake. A first-year teacher, brimming with enthusiasm and vision, had ignited a spark of passion for modern dance in 14 young hearts. The eager souls moved with grace and determination, their performances rivaling seasoned professionals. Among them were the teenage daughters of Reverend Rick and Barbara Maston, eager participants in this burgeoning artistic endeavor. During Christmas vacation, an opportunity arose, a chance to witness a renowned ensemble from New York perform in San Jose. The teacher, fueled with dedication to her students' enrichment, organized an excursion in her VW bus. Due to scheduled holiday engagements, the Maston family were not able to participate. Excitement filled the air as plans were made Dreams of inspiration danced in their minds. But fate had other plans. On the journey home, tragedy struck in a flash of metal and screeching tires. A drunk driver, heedless of the lives he endangered, pulled into the highway without a glance backward. The VW bus collided head on, shattering dreams and breaking hearts. Lives were lost others forever altered by the cruel hand of chance. Among the injured was Barbara Brussel, a vibrant spirit now facing a future marred by pain and uncertainty. Her dreams of dance lay shattered, her once promising future now clouded by doubt. Yet amidst the wreckage, a glimmer of hope emerged. In the hospital, amidst tears and despair, a bet was made, a wager of faith in the resilience of the human spirit, a promise that, against all odds, Barbara would dance again. As Reverend Rick recalled, 
Barbara was my daughter Jerry's best friend at the time. Her kneecap was so badly damaged that the doctor doubted that she would ever even be able to walk again without a cane, let alone ever dance again. My family and I visited Barbara in the hospital where I made a bet with her. I wagered that she would come dancing up our Bixer Road exactly one year from the day and that I would write the music she would be dancing to. And so, with determination burning bright, the journey towards healing began. A week later, the tranquility of his garden, in the tranquility of his garden, Reverend Rick found himself swept away by inspiration. The melody flowed effortlessly, weaving a tapestry of hope and renewal. Words poured forth a testament to the power of perseverance and the beauty of the human spirit. Share the laughter, bear the pain, he wrote. Each word a tribute to the courage of those who dared to defy the darkness. For Rick Maston, the song was more than a melody. It was a beacon of hope, a testament to the indomitable strength of the human heart. As the days turns to, turned to weeks and months, Barbara's journey towards recovery unfolded. Each step, though fraught with pain, carried her closer to her goal, and true to the wager made in a hospital room filled with uncertainty, she emerged triumphant. Exactly one year from that fateful day, Barbara Bussell danced once more, limping, perhaps, but with a spirit unbroken and a heart filled with gratitude. And as Reverend Rick strummed his guitar and sang, let it be a dance, the notes echoed through the hills of Big Sur, a testament to the power of faith and the resilience of the human spirit. In the years that followed, Reverend Rick Maston's legacy would endure, his songs and words touching countless lives across the globe. Though he may have left this world behind, his spirit lives on in the hearts of all who dare to dance and face in the face of adversity, to laugh in the midst of sorrow, and to embrace life's journey with courage and grace. And what can we possibly do except stand and sing the second verse of Let It Be a Dance? this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too let it be a dance let it dance and learn and spin let your body learn to bend and like a willow with a wind let it be a dance a dance. A child is born, the old must die. A time for joy, a time to cry. Take it as it passes by. Let it be a On this Memorial Day weekend, people around the country are gathering together and having wonderful picnics and parties and having a chance to go to the park and spend time with their loved ones and in the pool. And it's fortunately not too terribly hot outside, not yet, so it's still pleasant to be outside. But in the midst of all of that, 
we take a pause and we remember. In the liturgy that leads up to the Kaddish, there's an alternate reading that remembers all the innocents caught in the path of war and all the people who serve and who have given so much. And we thank and we remember and we memorialize them, obviously, with the weekend. We have a Memorial Day litany from the Reverend Amy Petrie Shaw. And your response, we lift up our hearts. For all who die in war, we lift up our hearts. for all who live in suffering we lift and in the aftermath of violence, we lift up our hearts. for all who gave their lives in smoke and flame, we lift up our hearts. for all who go on in honor of the dead, For all who have served, for for our country and our world, for the young and the innocent, for the weary and war-torn, for those who would pray, for those too angry. To cry. For all of us, for all the many names and faces of God, and together we lift up our hearts with a prayer for Shanti, Shalom, Peace, Salam, Amen, Amen, Blessed be, may it be so whatever your tradition allows for. (laughs) We'll stand in a moment and sing the beautiful Pete Seeger song from Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season, turn, turn, turn. Echoes of that are in Rick Mastin's beautiful song. And how could we not sing Pete Seeger's beautiful song? You all probably know most famously the famous recording by the birds. But uh, this morning we have the lovely and talented Joel. A time of love, a time 
I have a little secret confession. Not all that long ago, I used to hate ballet. <laughs> As a musician, I never understood what was going on. I saw the beautiful athleticism, I saw the gorgeous costumes, I saw the beautiful dancers, but I couldn't understand what they were doing had anything to do with the music. And it wasn't until a fair number of years later, about 25 years ago, when I started subbing for a friend playing piano for ballet classes, that I came to realize I finally learned the visual language of ballet, and I realized that what I hated about ballet was bad ballet. <laughs> I learned the visual language of ballet, I learned to understand what was going on, then a number of years later, I was working with a civic orchestra playing keyboards and piano and celeste and ersatz harp a few times. Um, and I had the great pleasure of playing for a production of Nutcracker with our guests dancing in the streets, Arizona. And I got to meet Joey and Celeste, and I came to realize that even from the perfection and ballet the heart behind it all. Y'all have heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it again many, many times. Every nonprofit I have ever worked for claims, well, we use our art to make the world a better place. And here's a secret confession a lot of that is bull. But Joey and Celeste and Dancing in the Streets genuinely uses their art and their welcoming and their inclusion and their beautiful, beautiful sense of family and togetherness that they build throughout their company. And we're pleased to welcome them this morning and their upcoming production. We have a short clip from Kay Gunn we'd like to play for you right now. Dancing in the Streets is a nonprofit ballet school in town with the goal of creating a diverse and inclusive space. With all dancers of all ages, they're working hard right now to put on their next ballet. And I actually got to go to rehearsal today and learn more about this performance and why it's historic. Well, like, it, it's a good workout. With the beat of the music, <laughs> the ballerinas are leaping into the world of Cinderella. It's a little different. It's not like exactly Cinderella, Cinderella, but it's like we like added some stuff to it. At the rehearsal for this ballet, a lot of twirling, a lot. It brings the dancers together. Getting to meet new people and getting to have fun. And soon it will bring the community together. This ballet will kick off the Tucson Juneteenth Festival. Featuring a uh, African-American Cinderella. Meet Cinderella, played by Kayla Stoglin. It's a really big role for me because I've never really done a big role like this. For 
her, dancing is something that she's done her entire life, even helping with her ADHD. It's like, okay, if I can focus in dance, I can focus in school. So with this ballet, she hopes to inspire others like her. We're kicking off Juneteenth, so I feel like me being an African American woman, an African American dancer, is also gonna like spark something with like people of color. The Cinderella Ballet will debut on June 8th at the Temple of Music and Art. Reporting from 38th Street and 7th Avenue, Tina Giuliano, KGA 9. I'd like to invite them forward, Joey and Celeste, and our wonderful guest dancers. As they said, coming up in two weeks, two weekends at the Temple of Music and Arts, we will be having them dance the beautiful, beautiful uh, Cinderella story with music by Sergei Prokofiev and the wonderful, wonderful company. Would you tell us what prompted you to form the company? Well, um, my husband and I are natives of Tucson and we met in ballet school when we were teenagers, um, had life, went away, married other people, came back when our parents were um, aging, and uh, Joey, my husband over there, he, we were at a town hall meeting, and of course the entire arts community was represented by the Tucson Symphony, which, you know, all artists were all the same. So at that <laughs> meeting, Joey's vision was, you know what, I want to start a dance school for kids like me. Joey was in the neighborhood of South Park, and we were at a barbecue, and there was a whole bunch of kids that were inside playing video games. Joey got them all out with a trick that he does, and we found that they were just hungry for ballet. We moved out onto the street in the cul-de-sac, and we started teaching them, you know, put your heels together, bend your knees, lift your heels up, and they were so hungry for it. It was at that point that Joey said, I'm gonna start a school, we're gonna start a school. So in we got married, and with our wedding gifts, we had our startup money. My mother, Marion Lupu, was the founder for Pima Council on Aging, so her encore career was our CEO, and Dancing the Streets Arizona was founded. So we've been in business 16 years, and this really is, I know Joey's not speaking today because he already worked <laughs> in our yard. We had a tree fall down, <laughs> so <laughs> he's exhausted already. Um, we really wanted to give back to the community. Uh, I suffered from anorexia, so having all body shapes and sizes is important to me. Um, also, Joey is an ADHDA kid, so we wanted to make sure that ballet was accessible for everybody. There are so many barriers for ballet that grown-ups put on kids, but it's really, it doesn't matter. Everybody starts, bends your knees together, it's a plie. The technique of ballet is for everyone. If you strip away all the other stuff, it's about music and dance and telling a story together. It's like any other football team, softball, kickball, any kind of athletic performance, ballet is there. Dancing the Streets Arizona is not a competition school for that reason. We do two full-length ballets a year and we do other community performances like this one. So Cinderella, is a kickoff for the Juneteenth Festival. There's a whole week of events, and we are the first event. It is historic because we have Kayla Stoglin, and we have an African-American male dancer coming from Phoenix Ballet, Arizona, oh, Ethan wow. Price. We are so excited to have him. He doesn't get here till Sunday. Kayla is so nervous, she doesn't know what to do with herself. So this is the story of the ballet of Cinderella, not the um, Disney version. The ballet Cinderella has Fairies. Each fairy comes to Cinderella with an item of clothing for the ball instead of the bling. So we have Tira, who's been dancing with us since she was about five. And Tira is going to be dancing the spring fairy. We have Arden, who is an adult student, 22. And Messina, who is 10. And Rosa, who is 18? 17. Oops, sorry. <laughs> The three of them are going to be the woodland fairies. So this is just two of the fairies. Unfortunately, it's Memorial Weekend. We couldn't get more dancers here. Um, oh, yeah. we, we need, you need to, no, we need to use Joey. The problem, the problem is you can't speak loud enough for people watching this in the future. Uh, okay. Uh, something's different happening because usually in the performing arts, Usually one dancer usually gets hurt 
One of our dancers got hurt. Uh, matter of fact, she has gall, she has gall, stone. gall stone. So Messina, because you heard the age difference. She's 17, she's 10, she's 22. Messina is stepping in as a 10 year old in this girl's shoes. So it's a big thing, because in dance, you just don't know. If one dancer go out, I'm looking around saying, who knows this part? <laughs> I don't care how old and how, if you know this part, you know, so that's why Messina is here, so. Well, the show must go on regardless. That's, that's true in all varieties of ballet. This is the dance variations, the presentation of, one, two of the presentations of gifts from Cinderella music. So we have the spring fairy, and then we have the woodland, spring fairies going first, and then the woodland fairy variation. So dancers, if you want to go to stage left, and Tira, load up and get yourself ready, I'm going to walk back to the DJ booth. Thank you once again to Celeste Lupu, Joey Rogers, and Dancing in the Streets, Arizona. You can come down. Come on down. I know they'll have flyers and brochures available out in, I hope you'll, you'll join us for social, or at least leave your flyers for us so that we can pass them out. I'm going to do one last shameless promotion. Please do. Uh, tickets are on sale now through Memorial Day, $3 off each ticket. Tickets start $18 and run through VIP $75 tickets. That includes a light dessert after the show and a picture opportunity with Ethan and the other stars of the ballet. So um, if you have any troubles purchasing online, you can call, and I'll click from the computer at the studio. Thank you very much. And Thank we can, you. And And we can find you online where? You can find us online at D-I-T-S-A-Z dot O-R-G. Dancing in the Streets, Arizona. Arizona, though. Dancing in the Streets, Arizona. Thank you once again. It's wonderful, wonderful to see you guys again and wonderful to have you dancers. Thank you so much. I think I can hand you this back. You heard a little bit about the creation of Let It Be a Dance and the story of Rick Maston 
And I've never met him. I know of him from several different places, and I know some of you in here have had the privilege of meeting him and being around him. Um, like a lot of you, you musicians, he can be a little cranky at times, but with reasonable reason. In the last verse of Let It Be a Dance, there's a line that says, share the laughter, bear the pain. If you have a hymnal handy, it's 311, or if you're at home watching this, it's 311. On the third page at the bottom of the page, share the laughter, bear, it says in here, bear, B-E-A-R, bear the pain. So we're supposed to share the laughter and bear up under the pain? That's not what he wrote originally. What he wrote originally was share the laughter, bear the pain, as in make the pain apparent. So just as we share our laughter, we show and share our pain. And the stories that have passed around a few things where uh, Reverend Mastin's been there for various events and he said, all right, grab the hymnals and get a pencil. <laughs> and it's funny because I actually have a copy of a, one of these hymnals at home, my personal copy that I bought in Kansas City like 20 some years ago. Uh, somebody has taken white out and crossed out B-E-A-R and replaced it with B-A-R-E. So bear that in mind <laughs> as we stand and sing. And this time, let's sing all three verses. Oh, yep, that's a good idea. I've also taken a little bit of musical liberties with this because the way it's written has a kind of a dance feel, but how can you not want to tango? This has such a tango feeling. So I won't, bear, I won't blame you at all if you get carried off helpless in the spirit of dance this morning. I have had to dance and sing at the same time in the past. Today is not the day. <laughs> dance with you through the good times and the bad times too let it be a dance <laughs> let a dancing song be heard let me reveal the words <laughs> and fill the sky with sailing birds let it be a dance let it be a dance dance. Learn to follow, learn to lead. Feel the rhythm, feel the need. To reap the harvest, plant the seed. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you. Through the good times and the bad times too Let it be a dance Everybody turn and spin Let your body learn to bend And like a willow with a wind Let it be a dance Let it be a dance Let it be a dance the old must die, a time for joy, a time to cry, take it as it passes by, let it be a dance, let it be a dance we do, may I have this dance with you, through the good times and the bad times too. <coughs> Morning star comes out at night 
without the dark there is no light if nothing's wrong then nothing's right let it be a dance let it be a dance let it be a dance let the sun shine let it rain share the laughter bear the pain and round and round we go again let it be a dance As we were singing this, my wife was going by, twirling like a ballerina <laughs> through the back doors, and that's why I was breaking up on stage. <laughs> okay, I have a few announcements to make. As you leave our sanctuary this morning and into the Oasis room, you'll see a table with, on which rests a wooden bowl and a woven basket. The bowl, of course, is for our financial support of the church house, our minister and staff, and our programs. And the basket is for this month's partner organization, Children's Action Alliance. With offices in Phoenix and Tucson, Children's Action Alliance engages our state legislature advocating for Arizona children and families. They track bills, report to the public, and focus on health education safety for kids today and tomorrow. All of your gifts to our Congregation or Children's Action Alliance will be gratefully received. You, you, the vote is coming to Arizona. On Saturday, June 1st, Nora Rassman will be coming to the UU Church of Tucson, otherwise known as 22nd Street, to lead a phone bank reaching up out to UUs across Arizona. 9 a.m. to noon, there will be food and training and then phoning out to people of our faith to ensure that they are prepared to vote in November. Reverend Matthew has joined the phone bank and hopes you will too. Contact him for more information. On June 29th, we are hosting first aid and CPR training. If you are curious, there is information on our weekly newsletter, or you can talk to Stacy, our coordinator of religious exploration. While there is a fee, we, ho we have scholarships for anyone who is interested. The fee is very minimal. On June 16th, Jamili Omar, our Baja Four ministerial intern, will be at MVUU to preach. She's completing her internship, has been approved for fellowship as a UU minister, and will be ordained at the UU Church of Tucson next fall. Join the celebration honoring by, and honoring by contributing generously to her farewell gifts, a chasuble, otherwise known as a robe, uh, and if you donate, and also of cake, if you donate by check, make sure that you put MVUU on the order of line with Jamili on the memo line and place it in the bowl or mail it to MVUU. As announced this week, in a special email to you, Sunday, June 9th is our congregational meeting. We will be hearing reports about finance and the state of MVUU and voting on our slate of officers and next year's budget. Please plan to stay for an hour <clears throat> after the service, either here, in person, or online. Mary Nell Hoover has a few words for us also. Hello, everyone. I'm a member of the nominating committee. And we are looking forward to the congregational meeting on the 9th. I hope that you got a chance to see the candidates for the uh, incoming offices in the newsletter. And if you haven't, there's pictures and summaries of them 
And so take advantage of that. The reason I'm up here is because we want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to participate in the voting. So I have with me today, for those of you who can't be here, and we know that some of you are going to be traveling or otherwise occupied, uh, occupied and won't be able to be here for the June 9th congregational meeting. So I have absentee ballots here. I will just need to sign them out to you. Uh, for those of you who are watching now and will want to do this remotely, uh, Tuesday, Stephanie will be back in the office. You can simply contact her and she will send you an electronic version. This is the modern age, so you can vote uh, by scanning your ballot and sending it in. You can send it by mail or you can drop it off at the office. Lots of options, but it's really important for everyone to have an opportunity, if you're a member, to vote in this process. We have, as we have had in previous years, some great candidates, and I know that you'll want to be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Nell. Okay, we are going to release the flame. And it's titled, May We Hear the Melody of Life by Reverend Joseph Cleveland. May we hear the melody of life and find ourselves singing harmony. May we be open to the dissonances in the song of the land and its people that we might be part of the world's urging towards justice, peace, and love. May we feel in our bones the rhythm of life and the land and find ourselves dancing. How wonderful and beautiful to see Celeste and Joey and their dancers this morning. I know they are with me in that art and music and in my case, singing or playing an instrument, in their case, dance, is truly for everyone. Did you really think you were going to get out of here without you taking a turn? Everybody up! I'm not going to attempt to give you any kind of choreography, but a little bit of shoulder, a little bit of hip, a little bit of foot here and there, Whatever works for you, and if you don't feel comfortable dancing, let's just have lie, 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 lie. I'm perfectly fine with that, too. 